Meet Swamplytics, my Mauritania locked ultimate Iron Man. After recently maxing my ultimate Iron Man, I decided to up the ante. To forge my own journey from scratch. No banking, no trading, but this time, I can't leave Mauritania. All leading up to eventually taking on one of RuneScape's biggest challenges, the Theater of Blood. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of research on Rannis Draken in the past couple days. As I mentioned in the last video, this is not only going to be one of the most important boss fights, but also the most difficult until the Theater of Blood itself. The only information I've really been able to dig up is people's experiences right around the release of the quest, which was over 8 months ago. The verdict was pretty much similar all across the board, it wasn't an easy fight, the quest is listed as an experienced quest, but in reality is much much harder. People saying that they were using several brews with good gear, and a particularly relevant comment that doing this fight on a low level would not be ideal. I did manage to find one post about a level 68 completing the quest, which was just under a month ago, and this gave me some hope. But after seeing the inventory set up, those hopes mostly faded away. Just about everyone was using manta rays or brews and super combat potions, and the best food I can access and cook currently is lobster. I'm not able to use the food stalling mechanic that allowed me to kill Treyas Daith in episode 6 because the Rannis Draken fight is instant, so I'm stuck with food that heals 12 hit points, and I can't take a second inventory in to help me. This is the final quest in the Mauritania area, and there is no other way around it. I need it to progress, and all in all, this is going to be extremely difficult. It's time to make the final preparations. We've spent the last week grinding for these requirements to do this quest, and now we get to put it all into action. Now, the Rana's Dragon fight is obviously at the end of the quest, so we have to get there first, and in fact, there's another boss in the quest before even reaching Rana's Dragon, so... It's not as simple as just taking him on right away. I'm also very close to 71 attack and everything counts in this moment, so let me go finish that up real quick and we will start the quest. Alright, the quest has begun, awesome, now I need some cosmic runes because for the quest you need to enchant a silver sickle to make the coolest weapon of all time. Yes, it's done, it was so not worth coming here for cosmic runes. So I did a big oopsie, I took off my earmuffs without noticing and I died, so my Darok summon is now broken. Thankfully, if I can beat Rannis Draken, I'll be able to fix that helmet right up in a couple days, so I'm not worried about it. It's just, it just kind of sucks, I guess. Oh, one day, man, one day. I'll be in this room, okay? I'm gonna reference this exact episode. I'm gonna be like, hey, remember episode 10? I'm gonna be on like episode 64. You better remember this. The floating blue man. He's so gorgeous. Thank you, sir. A lot of people were actually asking me why I wanted Hunter up. Uh, that's three lamps away from two Hunter, which is fantastic. What I need 27 Hunter for is for baby implings. I can bare hand them for a ball of wool, which means I can make a salve ami and other amulets in the future. Here's the best part. No, Saflon, damn it. I want to search the crate. Leave me alone. Come on. Yes, there we go. The pestle and mortar crate. Fantastic. I don't have to kill zombies anymore. All right, it's time for the first boss fight of the quest. I really hope this strategy works because if not, well, I'm in a very bad situation. So uh, this is the strategy, by the way. Uh, I'm just going to wait for this guy to finish him off, which he does have a prayer draining attack, but I'm pretty sure he does enough DPS to where that's not a problem. All right, I'm 22 prayer and he's like almost dead. So plan worked. Nice. All right, one boss down, one to go, and this is a very, very special part of the quest. Let me just show you what this has just done for my account, because it's so fantastic. This is honestly, like, probably the most exciting part of the quest. All right, let me read through all these real quick. And this has just given me the knowledge to build the coolest weapon of all time. And now for the best part, I can now get an unlimited amount of silver sickles, which is huge because I've been carrying this one for the past like month and a half. So that is a completely permanent inventory slot freed up. I can get these whenever I want, and obviously I'm gonna need it to make the Avandus flail in a second here. But that permanent inventory slot, man, ooh, gets me fired up. The pinnacle moment, there we go, attach the emerald, now we enchant it, and then all we have to do is attach the chain. Create the Avandus Flail, the coolest weapon of all time. I've said that so many times, but I, I just love it so much, man. Look at it. 
It's so cool, look at it. Take a look at this gear that we've been using for the past, I don't know, six, seven episodes. The Rune Medhelm, the Myth Chain, the Myth Legs, it's all kind of become iconic at this point. You were never really able to kill Virewatch before the Avondis Flail because you had no weapon that would damage them. They're immune to every single weapon except the Avondis Flail. So after using the Rune Med, Myth Chain, Myth Legs setup for the past month and a half, I now have access to this drop table and it is the most exciting thing ever. So you know, you'd maybe think, hey, you get to upgrade one piece or something. No, it's every single one of those pieces. Rune legs, rune full helm, adamant plate body. It's fantastic. Flail absolutely destroys these guys, by the way. It has a 20% damage increase on vampires, so... It absolutely kills these guys. It could actually be a really decent training method to come here. These are pretty much like budget gargoyles. I mean, death rune drops, we get a bunch of armor drops. These are very, very worth camping. <gasps> yes! Addy Plate, yes, dude. This is fantastic. From Myth Chain to Addy Plate, this is actually a monstrous upgrade. All right, let's go sprint to safety real quick so I can put it on in peace. The end of an era. Oh, it kind of hurts, but at the same time, it feels so right. Let's look at the differences on these just so you can see. 40 extra stab bonus. Everything else is about 30, 20. Big range bonus increase. Oh, this is an extremely good way to farm nature runes now that I think about it. I'm gonna need a ton for the theater of blood and also high alking in general, so very good note to take. Hey, all right, you know what? That'll do for now. Addy plate legs, I still need to get the rune ones, but uh, these will do for now. Very, very cool, thank you. That is, uh, that is extremely interesting. So my prayer is still going down, I turned it off, but their attack cycle is so slow that halfway through the fight, they can just decide to blood tithe you and you'll just be sitting there draining your prayer points waiting for them to talk to you. It's a pretty interesting mechanic. I assume just no one does this content so like no one's had a way to check that. That is the biggest one right there. Rune plate legs. Oh my god. It's actually seeing a rune item on the ground on this account is something else. It just... It, it does something to me, man. Once again, just a massive upgrade. We started at about 100 evens on our defense, and now we're up in the 170s, so. It's so great. There we go. The setup is complete. That's our last item that we were looking for. It feels weird to not be in the usual setup. I gotta give you that much. Uh, this is a pretty small upgrade since it's just from the rune med helm to the rune full helm, but either way. All right, we're gonna go sell off all of this stuff to the general store, make some money, and then it's finally time to organize our Rannis Dragon inventory. See, kind of gauge how difficult this boss fight really is gonna be with my setup. Definitely gonna be coming back to the budget gargoyles at some point. That was great. I think it's only right. Uh, we are entering a new phase in our account. We're evolving which means it's time for a new look. I think I'm gonna get this blue cape. And now you can refer to this account by the phase of capes. So you can say like red cape Swampletics was my favorite. And the series went shit after you bought the blue cape and you know, stuff like that. So the way I have to get lobsters is through temple trekking and the easy treks only give you two lobsters for some reason while the medium treks give you around 30. So it's a complete non-comparison. I'm currently cooking food because I want to give them to my follower to make the medium trek a bit easier and hopefully this works, hopefully it's not that difficult and then we can have the food for the fight and 46 cooking, there we go, beautiful. Now that I have the Avondis flail, doing medium and hard treks is actually viable because I can destroy the juvenates now, this is awesome. Alright, medium trek finished and now we can claim our raw lobsters, beautiful sir. So I'm going to be completely real with you here, I do not expect to get anywhere close to winning in this first fight. Right. The goal currently, Rannis Draken has five phases. The goal for this attempt is to get to phase two because there's a mechanic in phase two where you can use the blood bombs that Rannis Draken shoots out against the two Virewatch minions that he also sends out. So I want to learn how to use that mechanic and in general, I just want to learn the mechanics better of the boss before I do a full on attempt. All right, it's time to storm Mire Ditch with our, uh, with our equipment, our new gear, full inventory of lobsters. This is gonna be so terrible, but that's honestly part of the fun of it. I just wanna learn the mechanics. I'm probably gonna mess a lot of stuff up. I know there is a 30 damage charge up attack that I have to avoid, but I need to see the animation for myself to really memorize it and try to avoid it better. The flail is so insanely inaccurate, it's actually a mess. Okay, so I know what his charge up looks like now. I did kind of screw up to dodge it twice. Uh, I took a 30 damage and I took a 10 damage. Oh, thank god there's a bail option. I couldn't even make it to phase two. Oh, 
This is actually depressing. I... How am I gonna do this? All right, so I'm just gonna buy a full inventory of Moonlight Mead. I wanna explore the mechanics of the boss a bit more. So I'm just gonna go in there with this inventory, see if I can figure anything at all out. So while I'm on my way over there, Mod Ed has responded to my question. Garlic does not weaken Rana's Draken as it does other vampires. I believe it only applies to vampires west of the River Salve, so... Unfortunate. I was grasping at straws. Unfortunately, it does not work. This Moonlight Mead exploration session is just going to be to test out Rannis' pathing. I want to see if there's a way to avoid the 30 damage attack while still doing damage, and overall, I'm just trying to catch something that no one has before that will just miraculously make me win this fight. Something interesting that I don't really feel like testing further is I don't think the 30 damage charge up can kill you. I took 25 damage right next to him. 68 defense, every single level count man. While I was at experiments, I found out something pretty interesting. I was looking into the Slayer Tower and checking monster drop tables, but I'm only 45 Slayer, so there's not really too much to work with. But Blood Velds are only a level 50 Slayer requirement. There were two things that stood out to me on the Blood Veld drop table. My first ever boots upgrade, Black Boots. They actually had some decent bonuses over the leather boots, and I need as much melee tank armor as I can get. Secondly, the big discovery, they had an uncommon drop of meat pizza. Meat pizza heals 16 hit points, an extra 4 over lobsters, and assuming I can bring 21 food into the fight, that's an extra 84 hit points I can heal with meat pizza over lobsters. Now all I have to do is get 50 Slayer. Returning to the dopamine tomes, we are back in business. Not really much Slayer XP on this one, uh, but hopefully this doesn't take too long. I'm predicting about six hours of temple trekking to get 50 Slayer. You're looking at another step in the Rannis Draken Master Plan. These swamp snakes can actually be skinned after they die, and you can get snake hides from them. Now, I am currently using leather van braces, but with the crafting levels I got last episode, I can craft myself snakeskin van braces yet another upgrade to the gear. These are going to be my best glove slot for probably a couple months, but they're also going to help in the Rannis Draken fight because they give extra magic defense and some melee defense. It's marginal, but literally anything helps, so that's awesome. All right, it took a few encounters, but we did get all of the snake skin. 45 coins each, that's criminal, jeez. All right, that's a cute little upgrade from the leather van braces, you know, anything helps. Dopamine Tome session number two. I am not as lucky with the Slayer Tomes as I used to be, unfortunately. We did get 50 fire making, though. I can't wait to get 65 all from Temple Trekking. 46 agility and 46 Slayer. There we go. Four levels to go. This should be 47, I want to say. Yeah, there we go. 47 Slayer. Awesome. I think this is the inventory. I think this is the magic inventory. Yeah, there we go. That's so great, man. 1,000 total achieved, 48 thieving. All right, this should be it, 48. Very nice. It turns out I'm not gonna have to do as much temple trekking as I thought. I'm gonna be able to take a little shortcut in a bit. The bog event has to be the most mentally draining thing in all of temple trekking. I do wanna have a dedicated discovery episode sometime soon where I will probably put the bog in it as well. And I just wanna try to outsmart this thing. I wanna get across it consistently in X amount of time I will beat this thing, I swear. It is so bad. 50 thieving. All right, there's a chance that this gives me 49 Slayer. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. One level to go, but I actually don't have to finish that one level off. Uh, as I mentioned the shortcut from earlier, I will be showing you that in just a second. As long as the calculations are correct here, we should be finished with temple trekking. There we go. 4k away. We are finished. Also, 50 agility, that is awesome. I have like barely touched agility courses on this account, it's great. So I hope I'm not grossly underestimating this fight, but this is my inventory. The plan is to defeat Tarn and do the Tarn Slayer mini quest, which rewards 5,000 Slayer XP on successful completion. I'm only 4,000 away, so this is what I was planning to do. Hopefully I can do it, this inventory is abysmal. So, uh, I used some food getting here. I've heard that's actually the worst part of it. Getting here through all the traps and stuff, that is actually the tough part of this mini quest, so... Tarn should be really, really easy, at least I hope. Okay, so I thought the terror dogs would actually be the most difficult part of this, but I managed to trap them behind Tarn, and now this should just be easy. I mean, as soon as my prayer goes down, maybe then we'll have some problems, but I don't think so. Alright, final hit, there we go, 50 Slayer. We can now kill Blood Velds, we can now get the boots upgrade, and we have unlocked the beautiful meat pizza. Alright, so first things first, I'm gonna be hunting for the black boots. I don't want to go for the meat pizza just yet. On average, right, let's say I get a meat pizza every 30 kills, which is being generous. 
I have to kill 630 blood velds with a rune scimitar for a full inventory of meat pizza to have one attempt at Rannis and potentially fail and have to do it all over again. So I just want to get the gear, I want to learn the mechanics, and then I will come back for the meat pizza. Six kills later, man. That's awesome. They're a rare drop, so that's that's great. I love it. So meet the best in slot boots until gargoyles where I can get Addy boots, but honestly, look at the differences. They're actually really decent. I'm very happy that I got these. I'm going to drop the ecto tokens, just every single food counts here, so I want to have the most space possible. This is just going to be a practice attempt. I really don't expect to get it here either. Hopefully I can make it to phase two this time. I really want to see if I can use those blood bombs. That is a mechanic that I really want to learn. I was also thinking of making a prayer potion, but I think I'm just going to try to make 44 prayer points last the entire fight. Dude, these hits are amazing! Oh my god! This RNG is actually unreal right now. The flail is super inaccurate, but whenever I do hit, it's been like an average of a 17 or something. I really need to try and only eat when he's doing that charge up attack, because that is when I can't damage him anyway. That's the best possible time to eat. Okay, I've tried using the blood bombs, but honestly it doesn't seem worth it. I'm just gonna- I'm gonna dodge them normally because I have a genuine chance at beating him here. This luck was actually once in a lifetime. Come on. Come on. 15. Beautiful. Please keep going. 13. Oh my god, what is happening right now? This RNG is something else. 19! I was hitting all zeros non-stop earlier. This is actually, this is a miracle. I could actually pull this off. All right, come on. Final phase of Firewatch. As long as I don't screw anything up here, I should be good. I should have this in the bag. I actually, this is, this is insane. This is it. I'm actually gonna do it. He can only attack with melee on this final phase. No food left. 20 prayer points. I have been blessed. I have actually just been blessed. I've averaged like a 17 on my successful hits. Looks like you don't need to kill 630 blood builds. That luck was something else, man. Any one of these hits at this point. Any one. There it is. Oh my god, what has just happened? The final speech, right? This is it? Yeah. I feel incredible right now. I don't know what just happened, honestly. I can finish the quest. That was possibly the luckiest I will ever be. Wow. Just, just I'm speechless, honestly. Sothlon, I did it, buddy. I beat him. A taste of hope completed. I have completed every single Mauritania quest that I am able to within my restrictions. Look at it, the beautiful unlimited teleport method that has just broadened my horizons completely. I cannot wait to start using this to its full potential. I also got this beautiful tome of experience which you might think I'd put on Erdlore or Slayer, but actually magic is a nightmare to train. I need to get 40 for teleport to house and 41 so I can finally start using my death runes, so beautiful 39 magic close to 40. What a rush, man. Rannis Draken defeated, medallion unlocked, it's time to slowly start getting ready for Barrows.